Senate Republicans recently elected Senator Jeremy Miller as their new majority leader, leaving a vacancy in the role of Senate president. At a mid-October meeting, members of the Republican caucus elected Senator David Osmick as the next Senate president, and he joins me in the studio now to talk about his new role. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Since your election to the Senate in 2012, you've been one of the more outspoken members of the Republican caucus, and you even threw your hat in the ring running for governor in the last election. Presiding over the Senate is a very different role. How are you thinking about this, and will it be hard for you not to be able to voice your opinions on issues that you're passionate about? I don't think it'll necessarily be hard. I mean, you know in life you wear many different hats, and you move from hat to hat or job to job, and you take different roles and responsibilities. And the responsibility of the president is to for the operations. He's an operations manager and professionally I was an operations, really a project manager, operations manager for a number of years for a healthcare company here in the Twin Cities. Uh, I see that as the role of making sure that you are the oil in the machine that keeps things moving and keeps things moving in the right direction. Um, me being outspoken, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not going to have an opinion on subjects. Uh, I may, and I've, I've already started to change maybe a couple of my behaviors, uh, but yeah, I, I think more of the spicy comments that I used to say, which got the attention, and you certainly saw them, uh, they were to make a point and to make the point well. I think you're going to find that my spicy comments might be dialed back, but the passion still will be there. The president of the Senate is the parliamentarian of the body, or the oil that keeps the machinery running, as you said. And you're overseeing the business of lawmaking, making sure that procedures and rules are being followed. You have stepped into the role from time to time here and there. Uh, but at this point now, are you really digging into studying parliamentary procedure? Yes, um, we, we govern ourselves based upon Masons. There's a couple of different rules of order. Robert's rules is what a lot of people know. Uh, Masons is what we at the Capitol use. And it's a book about, mm, about that thick. Uh, I am actually starting to read through it and have a couple of sessions with some people that are experts on Masons. Uh, to go through the finer points of Masons to make sure that I understand it. But like you said, I have been living under this for, you know, Masons for nine years. I understand as well as our rules and our rule book and what's called customs and usages. Um, I understand all of those roles and how they all work together to run the Senate floor as well as operate the Senate in general. And it is something where I have to be the arbiter or the decision maker to make sure that the rules are followed. And on the Senate floor, it's very important from a standard of decorum to make sure that we're, we're operating under the right rules and that we're enforcing the rules equally across, both regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, and that's what I'm going to be striving for. You mentioned decorum. In your statement, you said that you will strive, quote, to conduct legislative business smoothly, effectively, and with respect for the tradition and decorum of the Senate. So what aspects in addition to following the rules of tradition and decorum are most important. And in your view, is that in danger in part because of how much more polarized politics have become? I am a little concerned in the special session I ran the Senate floor uh, just to, to flex my muscles again to see if this is something I really wanted to do because we saw this you know, possibly happening where Senator Miller may be ascending to majority leader. Um, I, I look at the job and look at the aspects of trying to enforce equally, and you saw how Senator Franzen, who I'm going to be meeting with, now she's minority leader, interestingly enough, I saw how she reacted, and uh, I think we have to have a better understanding of that decorum, because in the House, the House guys, for lack of a better term, can wear a, a, a Speedo and eat a chicken dinner on the floor. That's the kind of decorum that we don't follow in the Senate. And it's because we've had those traditions, and I, I like to look at Senator Pappas and Senator Metzen too, from how they operated with a decorum to make sure that we, using the decorum not as a weapon, but as a mechanism so that we are all treated equally, I think that's something that, uh, it doesn't have to be polarized, but I think some people need to understand the, the processes of decorum that they are there for a reason is protecting not just the sanctity, not sanctity, but the importance of the institution, but also what it means to be a senator 
and those traditions that are there. So it's sort of a tough one to answer, but um, I, think, I, I think I'm well prepared for this. And you mentioned the new Senate Minority Leader, Melissa Lopez-Franzen. Um, you also said in your statement that it is important to you that the minority voice is heard, and she will certainly be part of that m minority voice. Why is that important? Right, and this is something, I mean, that some people will say, well, you're just mouthing words. No, that's not true. I was in the minority for four years. I understand what it's like to be in the minority and, and not be able to do what you want to do. Most times you just have your voice as the minority member. Hopefully I will work more to make sure that that voice is heard. But no, going back to decorum, you know, if you decide, if we're talking about that the moon is made of, we have an amendment or a bill that says the, the moon is made of blue cheese. And then you want to debate that and talk about blue cheese salad dressing. And then after that, you want to talk about the comparison between blue cheese salad dressing and, thanks, and Thousand Island. Okay, these are all subject to blue cheese. But if you decide to go off the rails and start talking about orange juice, you need to start bringing that back to some point of talking about blue cheese. I know it's a simplistic way of looking at it, but I want to make sure that the, the minority, and, and when I say these things, I, as I said, I don't say them just to hear my voice. I think the minority needs to be heard because the minority sometimes has very good points that need to be listened to. Uh, not always, but sometimes. And I think I'm also the, just the right guy to do it. Uh, I'm, very, I'm a very strong person at the gavel. I run things efficiently. But I also want to be able to have everyone listen to what the minority says because they are Minnesotans too. Finally, you will enter the history books as the 14th person to preside over the Senate since 1972 when Minnesotans passed a constitutional amendment that removed that role from the lieutenant governor. A couple notable previous presidents, Senator Jim Metzen was known for having good friendships on both sides of the aisle. Senator Michelle Fischbach was known for her jocularity in particular when debate got fairly tense. So I wonder if you've given any thought to what you maybe would like your legacy to be. Well, let's start with the, 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 the end of the, com the comment that you had first, the jocularity. I have a very interesting sense of humor. Uh, I think I can bring some of that to, to the institution I have from time to time, uh, especially in the case of, I don't know if you remember, Senator, uh, Senator, I think it was Senator Bach tried to in the transportation bill, and I was running the Senate at the time, he tried to have an amendment to name a road after Senator Newman. Um, I have been reminding Senator Newman that a number of times every year that we could always name a road after him. So it's, it's those types of light moments that can, actually, as Senator Fishbach did, diffuse a tense situation. Uh, it, it's, uh, as far as working across the aisle with individuals, I've learned over my nine years here, you can work with some on some issues, but maybe not on all issues. Senator Pappas, former president, um, she, uh, she and I agree strongly on the role of Israel in the, in the world, as well as uh, beer. Interesting combination. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator uh, Marty and I actually talked about a, week or about a week ago, talking about the role of the minority, and he was lead on my energy committee for a number of years. Uh, I've developed relationships with him. So, uh, Sen unfortunately, Senator Simonson is no longer with us, but I still have text messages with him. So. It's a matter of developing those relationships and having a level of respect. And I'll tell you, there are some senators that on the, on the other side that I don't work with particularly well. There's some that on my side <laughs> I don't work with particularly well. But you learn to, uh, learn to work through the system. You learn to work with the ones that you have relationships with and can agree upon. And I think what a lot of people see in, the, in any political body now, whether it's the state or the federal government, they see a lot of people screaming at each other. Well, you'll find out if you look closely, about 80% of the time, we generally agree upon a lot of things around here. My corrections bill last year was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of these things that I think we can work together on, and I'm going to try to strive to make that happen. Our new Senate President, David Osmek, I want to thank you so much. Thanks for having me.